Hey guys, so I wanted to do a quick little video where I talked about the first half of 2019 in regards to movies. Now, um, just to make it very clear, this is not my Oscar predictions video for the month of July. That's going to be coming a little bit later. But what this is, is I wanted to look over January through June, the films that have come out, and see which ones stand a chance at potentially being nominated for the Oscars. And what I did was, rather than go film by film, I decided to go category by category. So I looked at, uh, if the Oscars were held now, like just for the first six months of the year, what movies would be nominated? And uh, I put together a very, very rough list that is probably very incorrect. And one of the things that you'll notice is that the list is very heavy with a lot of genre films that tend uh, not to be nominated. Uh, so this list is very, very different from what a, a traditional Oscar category list would look like. But what I've noticed is that the movies from the first half of the year that tend to be nominated are genre films. A lot of the... Like, there's not a ton of uh, biopics or period pieces or traditional Oscar caliber films they usually hold that for the second half of the year, and for good reason, because Academy mem that's what Academy members are going to remember. Now, the reason that occasionally movies from the first half of the year do get nominated, uh, a lot of those films tend to be genre films. So, these are the ones that I think are going to stand the best chances of being nominated at the end of the year. These are the ones that I think the Academy will remember. Although... Obviously, the final Oscar list is going to look very, very different from this, but these are some films that you may want to keep an eye on. And I'm going to go category by category on this one, starting with Best Animated Feature. So, this almost looks like a category. Uh, How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World, Lego Movie 2, Missing Link, Secret Life of Pets 2, Toy Story 4. Uh, the only other animated films I really could have considered were Ugly Dolls and Wonder Park, and I don't think either of those is coming anywhere near this category. Um, and I think of these nominees, Toy Story 4 stands the best chance. We'll see what Frozen 2 does uh, in terms... I think Toy Story 4 is definitely going to get nominated. Uh, Missing Link is probably going to get nominated, and How to Train Dragon stands a fair chance too. We'll see how this shakes out, but animated feature, they're usually okay with nominating movies from the first half of the year. Um, I could probably do a really interesting, uh, I could probably look in years past and see what percentage of movies came from the first half. That's a whole other chart I could make later. But for now, I mean, there's probably some indie uh, foreign animated films that are 2D that have technically come out at this point, but we don't really know about them yet. So I feel like these five are your good bet. Oh, just to let you know, um, I'm only considering movies uh, from the first six months. If it was released after June, then it's not eligible. So something like The Lion King or Spider-Man Homecoming or even The Farewell, those are not going to be eligible for this list. This is only the first six months. Okay, if we look at Best Sound Mixing... Um, these are the ones that I feel have the best chance of being nominated. Uh, and I feel it's interesting. Rocket Man is sort of... It's being compared to Bohemian Rhapsody for very obvious reasons. But uh, I don't know if it can do what Bohemian Rhapsody did, which swept... It won both sound categories, uh, even though it's arguably not deserving. You can make a case for it winning sound mixing, but sound editing, like, no. Just why? Uh, and I'm really... I mean, okay, here's some of the other movies that I considered uh, for sound mixing. Uh, Triple Frontier, Godzilla King of the Monsters, Captain Marvel, Yesterday, How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World, John Wick, Chapter 3, Aladdin, uh, Under the Silver Lake. So, I, I feel like Avengers is gonna... Okay, spoiler warning, Avengers shows up quite a lot here. Because it is such a huge movie, and because it is, as I'm writing this, as I'm saying this rather, it is like 13 million away from Avatar, 
I have no idea if it's going to get there. It is so close. It is just agonizing. But because it's such a big movie, I feel like they're probably going to want to give it some love. I can see that happening in some of the tech categories. Um, may, possibly sound mixing. Sound mixing is possible. And I think the others are possible here. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Alita shows up because it was well respected in the uh, in the tech categories. And it is produced by James Cameron. So he's got, he's got, got, it's got that going for it. Best sound editing. I think that Endgame will be nominated. Um, and I think Toy Story 4 stands a very good chance. Uh, I'm curious to see how that movie holds up as the year goes on and what people think of it. Um, also, I wouldn't count out How to Train Your Dragon to show up because of the fact that they really should have nominated the first film. And I feel like How to Train Your Dragon could do really well in animated feature. If Toy Story 4 and uh, Frozen 2 end up canceling each other out, if there's a vote split, then I could see enough people being like, I'll vote for Dragon 3 because I liked the first two movies. And I mean, it's, it's like a Return of the King kind of thing. It's a way to reward the whole trilogy. So keep an eye out for that. And then Alita, I think, could happen. Rocket Man. This is the same five lineup. I don't have them in the same order. Um, and some of the movies I considered putting here were Pokemon, Detective Pikachu, Shazam, Captain Marvel, Triple Frontier, Godzilla, King of Monsters, Us. Uh, so, I, I don't know. It, I think that a lot of these are possible. They like to nominate the genre films, the action films. So, it's it's up for debate. Uh, I don't know which of these have the chance to make it. I think I would expect to see at least Endgame show up because of what a big film it is and how many sound effects there are in the movie. There's probably a better way of putting that, but... Best Original Song. So, someone... I wish there was someone out there that was keeping track of how many movies have original songs this year. I almost missed uh, Rocket Man's original song. Apparently that has one. I, didn't, I haven't seen the movie. And um, apparently... Oh, what's... I know there's a movie with original songs that, like, I completely forget the title to, but uh, Wild Rose? Wild Rose. There's a movie called Wild Rose with original songs that some people are saying could make it, and I have absolutely no idea because we really don't know this. Even the songs that we've heard, we don't know. Um, The Ballad of the Lonesome Cowboy. In my previous Oscar Predictions article, I said, I can't let you throw yourself away would be the big song from Toy Story 3 to Toy Story 4 to get on. And that's still possible, but Ballad of the Lonesome Cowboy, it it's sort of encapsulating Woody's arc, and it's sound it's sung by a guy who sounds a lot like Tom Hanks, so that could help. Um I really don't know. Uh I think Speechless is gonna stand a chance. I think Broken and Beautiful, some people may be underestimating that. And together from afar, I don't know, some people might want to support the How to Train Your Dragon franchise. And I, some other songs I considered, uh, Summer Song from Yesterday, The Catchy Song from The Lego Movie 2, Forward Motion from Late Night, Stirred Up from Penguins, Swan Song from Alita Battle Angel. Again, we really don't know what else uh, could be contending here, because uh, a lot of Best Original Song is just... I don't know. We'll see what happens. We'll see how the race shakes out. But I feel like at least some of these songs will factor into the race in some way. Best original score. So here's where you really start to see how uh, the, this category looks very, very different from the way it probably will. Um, I will say, Avengers Infinity War did make the short list last year. So maybe... That could sh they could be willing to throw a bone to Avengers Endgame. Um, also, Us did have a very good score, but a lot of the effectiveness of the music did come from the use of I've Got Five on it. And then, How to Train Dragon, they nominated the first one. Toy Story 4, they like Randy Newman. And then I threw in Missing Link on there just because... I, I forget who even does the music on that, but the animated scores do show up here. And I wasn't... 
I guess I wasn't sure what else to put here. Some of the other can, some of the other ones I considered were Missing Link, Dumbo, Alita Battle Angel, Under the Silver Lake, The Last Black Man in San Francisco, and Rocket Man. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I don't think this is how the category is going to look. I feel it's possible that one of these might show up. I feel Endgame is the one with the best chance of showing up, and maybe us, but I, I'm not so sure that any of these others can make it. Uh, yeah, but look, this category is just up in the air at the moment. Best Visual Effects. Now, this is really interesting because the five films that I have listed could be the lineup. Like, it wouldn't be shocking if these five films just make it. I, actually, I'm not even sure. What do I currently have predicted for Best Visual Effects? Because I'm not sure what, what replaces the, the... These are good... Oh, Lion King, obviously. And Star Wars... Uh, and potentially cats and like, okay, there's there's stuff coming up, but Endgame I feel like is gonna get nominated no matter what, simply because of what a big event of a movie that is. And then a little Battle Angel, I think people will remember, be, at least people in the visual effects branch will remember it. Captain Marvel gets a lot of leeway for the simple fact that they de-aged Samuel L. Jackson, and also it's a Marvel movie, so it's got coverage, uh, and it could show up on a short list. I'm not sure if it's going to get nominated. I've heard decent things about Dark Phoenix, so keep your eye on that, but Pokemon Detective Pikachu, I feel like this could be your Christopher Robin slash Kong Skull Island. This could be that movie that like shows up inexplicably on the short list, and everyone's like, weird that that's on the short list, and then it gets on. Uh, sometimes it's weird little movies like this that have a lot of love behind them, and people do really like the movie, and they do really like the CGI and character designs, so I could see this happening. Uh, keep your eye on it. And some of the other ones I considered were Godzilla King of Monsters, Aladdin, Dumbo, Toy Story 4, because the CGI looks really real, and if, Ala if Lion King is going to be considered, despite being 100% CGI, then maybe Toy Story 4 or even Dragon could be considered. Or Missing Link, like it got in once before. No. So yeah, uh, that's where I stand on visual effects. Best makeup and hairstyling. Okay, I am really, really curious to see how this category shakes out, because this is the first time ever that we're getting five nominees, and maybe it was a good idea to introduce it this year, and maybe it wasn't, because... There's a lot of, I don't know what film makeup is going to look like as the year progresses. I feel like Hellboy is definitely one to keep your eyes on because I saw a featurette where they talked about the practical effects in creating the makeup. And also, I think one of the Hellboy movies was nominated here in the past, even though this one was not very well received. I mean, this is the same category that nominated movies like Click and Norbit, so you don't need to be super well received to be nominated for Best Makeup. Um... But it can help, as in the case of something like Avengers Endgame, uh, two words, Fat Thor. I think that could contend in this category simply because of that. And then Dumbo, there's clown makeup in it. Uh, Ophelia, I have no idea if that's going to be a thing at all. Um, the dead don't die, the zombies and that. Like, these five kind of make sense as a category. And I know a lot of these categories are going to look weak anyway, but look at what else was available. Rocket Man, I guess, could be a thing, but I, I don't really know. Uh, Us, Aladdin, Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil and Vile, Men in Black International, Velvet Buzzsaw, Five Feet Apart, like that, it, it drops in quality pretty quickly as I go down the list, because I did make a big list. Um, and then it goes like right down to the bottom with films that like are obviously not going to contend at all. Uh, so... I don't know. I'm really, really curious to see how this category is going to shake out and what... They're probably going to have to pull some stuff from the first half of the year. And so, keep an eye on these five. Best Costume Design. Okay, I feel fairly confident that Aladdin is going to be nominated. And I feel like Dumbo could be a surprise nominee too. Because they like their live-action fairy tales in this category. The live-action Disney fairy tales. I mean... Actually, live-action fairy tales in general. 
Because, yeah, they nominated... They gave Alice in Wonderland the win, and they nominated Cinderella and Beauty and the Beast. Uh, they also nominated Mirror Mirror and Snow White and the Huntsman. So they just like live action fairy tales, and so Aladdin, I feel, will definitely contend, and Dumbo might stand a chance. And then Ophelia is a period piece that Shakespeare, so even if the film doesn't get the best of views, I could see a few votes going the way of that film. Us has the... Uh, the Michael Jackson inspired looks of a tethered and Rocket Man Billy Joel were some cool stuff in that. So I could see this happening and then I'm not even sure, like some of the other ones that I considered were Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil and Vile, Alita Battle Angel, Captain Marvel, Book Smart. Like again, it drops off in quality pretty quickly after this, and there's gonna be a lot of like high high profile period pieces uh, that show up later. So Again, if the Oscars were held right now, I feel like these could be your nominees, but there's going to be some bigger players here. This is not in any way a final predictions list. Moving on to production design. I think Aladdin definitely could contend. Dumbo could contend. They do like they like fairy tales okay in a, in this category too. But then Ophelia... I, I, I guess could make it. Uh, I, I don't know. It's, it's Shakespeare. There's castles and stuff. Is anyone going to see the movie? I have no idea. Does anyone even know what Ophelia is? It's a story of Hamlet told from Ophelia's point of view. Then Avengers Endgame. To be perfectly honest, I feel like Marvel is going to make a big FYC campaign because this movie is like the biggest movie ever, or at least 13 million away from being the biggest movie ever. And so, I feel some Academy members might be pressured into voting for it in some minor categories. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I could see this popping up in a few places that we didn't, we don't expect it to. And then, I just threw on Detect Detective Pikachu in because people did like the world building in that movie, even though I don't think it has a serious chance of getting nominated. And then, what are some of the other ones I considered? Alita Battle Angel, Toy Story 4, Captain Marvel, Missing Link, How to Train a Dragon, The Hidden World... The Aftermath, uh, Hellboy. Yeah. No animated film has ever been nominated in this category, which doesn't make a lot of sense, as I've said in the past, but I threw in some animated films in here. Just, what the hell? They didn't even make my top five of the first half of the year, so obviously they're not going to contend at all. And then The Aftermath was a World War II movie. It was a Holocaust movie with Keira Knightley that was at the beginning of the year that seemed kind of oscar baity, but reviews were like so-so, and then... Anytime an Oscar Beatty movie is released at the beginning of the year, it means the studio does not have a lot of confidence in it. And be honest, how many of you had totally forgotten that that movie even existed? Okay, so I think Aladdin is the only one here with a real chance, although there's a slight possibility that Dumbo could surprise. It is Tim Burton, and the Academy does like... They like Tim Burton in the past, but his most recent movies have been very much misses. Best Cinematography. So I think Us has the best shot of any movie released in the first 12 months of being nominated. Um, but I wouldn't completely count out Booksmart because that movie does have some very well done cinematography. Um, if you've seen it, you know what I mean. It's the kind of movie that feels like it would be a very basic by the numbers comedy, but the use of cinematography in it does help elevate it. In particular, the argument scene that is done in one continuous take. And then Endgame, again, people like Endgame and Marvel is going to push it, so I wouldn't be totally shocked if something happened. Under the Silver Lake, people said that that had good cinematography, even though people were mixed, severely mixed on the film itself. I remember, if you remember any of my Oscar prediction videos from the previous year, I really thought that Under the Silver Lake was going to be a very big deal, and then it turns out it's not. And then I, I guess I put Ophelia on because what else is there? That's how these, these shake out. I just don't know what else is there. I mean, Alita Battle Angel, Rocket Man, Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil and Vile, The Last Black Man in San Francisco, Glass, Captain Marvel, Serenity, Yesterday. Do, I mean, I'm going to list these off, and you're like, do you think any of them have, have a serious chance of being nominated? I don't know. Like, anything could happen. The Academy does like to shock us, but 
I feel fairly confident in while most of the movies that I'm naming in this video are not going to be nominated for stuff, like, if you're just going by the first six months, what else is there, really? Best Film Editing. So, I put Us as the most likely film to be nominated, but Avengers Endgame is right there, and I think it's possible. So Us could get on because it's very, very, very good editing, and the film is beloved and could potentially... Well, we'll get to that later, but I think it's going to be one of the most beloved movies of the first half of the year, if not the most beloved of the first half, and people will definitely remember that when they get to uh, the Oscar predictions. Uh, Endgame, though, the Academy has shown that they like to nominate action movies uh, that don't stand a particularly good chance uh, in Best Picture. we I mean, they gave the win to one of the Bourne movies, didn't they? And they nominated Star Wars, The Force Awakens. So, I would not be shocked if Avengers Endgame, the three-hour movie that had everybody hooked and nobody bored, I mean, that is not a small feat at all. So, I could see that nomination happening. And then the others, Booksmart, Late Night, Well-Liked Comedies, and Toy Story 4, no animated movies ever been nominated, but this one's well-liked, so I threw it in there, because why not? Again, what else is there? I'll tell you what else there is. Under the Silver Lake, Alita Battle Angel, Triple Frontier, Rocket Man, Yesterday, John Wick Chapter 3, Velvet Buzzsaw, Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil, and Vile. So here's where we get interesting, when we get to the top eight. And I'm just going to warn you now, Best Adapted Screenplay is a mess because movies that want to go for the Oscar for Best Adapted Screenplay don't tend to release in the first six months of the year, and you'll see that when you look at this category. Um, I think Toy Story 4 is the only one that even has a prayer at being nominated. I walked away from that film thinking it could definitely get on, but I know that people are split on the movie, so... I mean, if Coco couldn't get on in what was admittedly a very good year for Best Original Screenplay, then I don't know if Toy Story 4 is any real shot. Um, but I'll put it this way, it has a better shot than any other movie that came out in the first six months. I mean, Endgame was a big deal, but I can't see it making screenplay. Um, I put it up here because, again, what's that? Dragon 3, Captain Marvel, Extremely Wicked, Chocolate, Evil, and Vile. This is a weak lineup. I will be the first to admit that. And it's a very, very genre lineup. Like, that never happens. But what else is there? I feel like a broken record if I keep saying that. But look at what other movies like came out in the first six months. We have Ophelia, The Best of Enemies, Detective Pikachu, Shazam, Alita Battle Angel, The Upside, Aladdin, The Aftermath. Dark Phoenix, John Wick Chapter 3, Lego Movie 2, Dumbo, The Sun is Also a Star, Breakthrough, when Men in Black International. I went really far down that list just to prove my point that there's really not enough to even begin to justify Best Adapted Screenplay over the first six months of the year. I mean, if you can name any movie that has a better shot, be my guest. But... These are just genre movies that might be well-remembered, and people might remember the Zac Efron, Ted Bundy movie. So, this, people might remember these. I'm not saying they're going to happen. I'm saying there's not a whole lot of options to choose from in the first six months. Toy Story 4 is the only one that realistically has a chance. Best Original Screenplay. Now, this actually looks kind of like a real lineup. Uh... It's not a very diverse lineup. There is three comedies here, and usually there's only one or two. Um, I feel like Us is definitely the one with the best chance of getting on, but Booksmart is right there, and that movie is very well liked, and people do like Late Night as well. Um, I don't see Yesterday or Last Black Man getting on, um, and some of the other contenders I have were Under the Silver Lake, Long Shot, Velvet Buzzsaw, Greta, Rocket Man, uh, this is, I don't know, the five here are a pretty good category if this was, like, the first six months of the year. If they announced the winner, if they announced nominees right now, 
I'd be like, yeah, that's an okay lineup. It's certainly better than adapted screenplay. And I feel like some of these potentially have a shot. Uh, I pay attention to both us and Booksmart. They could go all the way. And Late Night is right there, and people do like that movie. So, I, I don't know. It feels, it's, it's better than adapted. I'll take it. Now, supporting actress. Okay, let's talk about supporting actress. Um, yeah, uh, I don't really know how you would have... I'm aware that these lineups do not look good. But, okay, here's the thing. Mindy Kaling in Late Night. Yes, technically she might go lead, but I feel like they're going to push Emma Thompson lead, and that could really make a case for Mindy Kaling being like, ooh, maybe I can get an Oscar nomination. And I don't think that she can. I feel like she might get a few nominations from from some Spirit Awards and critics groups, which, in all honesty, would be enough to boost her career a little bit. I could see her maybe getting a Globe nomination or a Critics' Choice, not going all the way for Oscar, but I definitely, I definitely think that she has a better chance than any other supporting actress this year of getting on. Um, Elizabeth Moss is great in Us, but she doesn't have a ton of screen time. Nicole Kidman in The Upside is like the most Oscar Beatty role of a movie that people have already forgotten about that was in January, but I put her there because she's Nicole Kidman and people like her and it's a Beatty role. Scarlett Johansson, I thought about putting Karen Gillian here instead, but uh, I don't know, people really like Johansson and want to give her nomination. It won't be for this. And then Tilda Swinton, people really like Tilda Swinton. I don't know. The only, my number six here was Chloe Grace Moretz in Greta. Um, I guess because people like Moretz and people like the movie. And then I had Naomi Scott in Aladdin. <sighs> Lily James Yesterday, Renee Russo, Velvet Buzzsaw, Anne Hathaway, Serenity, Riley Keough, Under the Silver Lake, Billy Lord, Booksmart. And yeah, like, th- I mean, this is okay. I feel like I have to constantly defend myself and, like, this was the best I could get. Um, I don't know. I try to make this look presentable. Uh, I think this is an okay lineup, but I don't think any of these actresses could really contend. I think Mindy Kaling might come closer than we think, but I don't see a world in which she actually gets nominated. But what I will say is, if you think supporting actress looks weak from the first six months, then Oh boy, wait till you get a load of Best Supporting Actor. Because there are no contenders from the first six months of the year that have even a fighting chance of getting an Oscar nomination. There are absolutely none. And, um, yes, Chris Hemsworth. If you had to twist my arm and say, of all those supporting actor performances of the first six months of 2019, who do you think has the best chance I have to say Chris Hemsworth. It's not happening, but let's, I mean, okay, I'll defend this. He gave a funny but surprisingly nuanced performance um, as a man who was dealing with depression and was letting himself go, and it was in a movie that everybody saw and everybody liked. I'm not saying he's going to get an Oscar nomination. I'm saying... I could see a world in which he gets a few critics things and a few guilds. I could see a world in which, peop- in which people are like, hey, remember him? He was really good in the movie. Let's give him, a- let's shout him out a few times. And yeah, I mean, the other four aren't great either. I recognize that. Winston Duke, it kind of makes sense on paper, but he doesn't do a whole lot in the movie. Uh, Will Smith, people like him. Uh even though there's no way he's getting nominated for that role. Vince Vaughn, people liked his performance in the movie if they saw it. Oscar Isaac makes sense for the kind of movie it is. My number six in here was Jack Dylan Grazer in Shazam, simply because a lot of people really liked that performance uh, and the character. But I don't see a world in which that happens. And then you want to see some of these runner-ups. John Lithgow, Late Night, Keanu Reeves, Always Be My Maybe, Sam Rockwell, The Best of Enemies, 
Samuel L. Jackson, Glass. Bill Murray, The Dead Don't Die, Jason Clark, Serenity, Chris Evans, Avengers Endgame, Ben Mendelsohn, Captain Marvel, Jonathan Majors, The Last Black Man in San Francisco, Christoph Waltz, Lead a Battle Angel, Nick Frost, Fighting with My Family, Jamie Bell, Rocket Man, Tom, Tim Allen, Toy Story 4. Like, that's where the lineup goes, to be honest. And you got a problem with that? Great. Name somebody. Like, name somebody who has a fighting chance in the first six months of the year. All the supporting actors are saving up. Like, usually there's somebody, but there is no one. Not in the first six months. There's just not anyone. And, but, in Best Actress, we do have a few contenders, debatably. Okay, well, we have a legit contender in Lupita Nyong'o. Everybody who saw us knows how amazing Lupita Nyong'o is in the movie and knows that it can happen. I, I feel like it's not totally out of the question. I mean, uh, Jordan Peele, his last movie, got the lead actor Daniel Kaluuya nominated. Lupita Nyong'o is a previous Oscar winner and she is amazing in the movie and everybody knows it. It's possible. Um, but I... And I think I even predict her. I think I even have her in in my lineup currently. But it's going to be tough for her to get in, but I feel like she has a better chance than anyone else. Emma Thompson is probably number two. Uh, she is very well liked in her movie. And then Beanie Feldstein, Isabel Huppert, and I debated Brie Larson or Caitlin Dever for the last spot, but well, people like Captain Marvel enough. People are like, oh, it's a feminist thing. I feel like if it was more universally liked, then Brie Larson would seriously contend, but I, I don't know. And then Lily Collins, Extremely Wicked, Chocolate, Evil, and Vile was a runner-up. Octavia Spencer in Ma, Gagoon Batha Ra in Fast Color, Sophie Turner in Dark Phoenix, Charlie Theron in Longshot, Haley Lou Richardson in Five Feet Apart, Florence Few, Florence Pugh, Fighting With My Family. Like, I think there's enough... We've actually come a long way in good, strong roles for leading women in Hollywood movies. So, there's actually quite a few contenders. I feel like the, this five is an okay five. I, like, I'm fine with it, and I think Lupita Nyong'o does stand a legitimate chance at being nominated. So, yeah, that's what I have to say about lead actress. All right, lead actor... Is it weird for me to say that I kind of like this category? I, I kind of like the lineup I have going on here. I think that Robert Downey Jr. actually has a chance of getting on. Because he played this role for a full decade, and because he's so beloved in the role, and because I, I feel like it would be a great nomination, and I think it is totally possible. Um, We'll wait to see how the season shakes out, but... Keep an eye on Robert Downey Jr. He could be a great representation of the film. And he's, he's great in the movie, and he's great in the role. I watched all of them in preparation for Endgame. Most of them I had, of the Marvel movies, most of them I hadn't seen before. And uh, watching Robert Downey Jr., I will admit to being Team Tony. Yeah. I just, I like him in the movie, and I feel like he can contend. He gets some great scenes in Endgame, too. But then Taron Egerton... Taron Edgerton, rather. Sorry. Taron Edgerton is right behind him. I feel like he can contend simply because he's trying to be... If this is Bohemian Rhapsody, then he is the Rami Malek of the movie. And people really liked that the first time, so it can happen. I feel like all of these, to a certain extent, are not impossible. Zac Efron... I mean, people really liked... Okay, I, people are somewhat debate, are somewhat split on the movie, but I feel like overall people liked his performance. And then Himish Patel, I think, can get on because, um, I, I mean, maybe not. I feel like Himish Patel can get a Golden Globe nomination and he can get a Critics' Choice Comedy Musical nomination and he's not going to come anywhere near the Oscar, but that's probably enough for him and that's probably very good for him. And then we have Tom Hanks. Yes, I know that it's foolish to, to say a voiceover performance can get nominated. 
Um, and I'm not predicting him officially. I don't think it can happen, but I feel like some people will vote for him. Come on, he's Tom Hanks voicing Woody. He does a great job. A lot of the movie is anchored around him. I feel like the, it can totally happen. I, it, it can't happen, I know. But people will vote for him. Come on, maybe? Okay, some of the other people I suggested. Andrew Garfield, Under the Silver Lake. Jimmy Falls, The Last Black Man in San Francisco. Kevin Costner, The Highwayman. Kevin Hart, The Upside. Jake Gyllenhaal, Velvet Buzzsaw. Zachary Levi, Shazam. Brian Cranston, The Upside. Nicholas Holt, Tolkien. Uh, Woody Harrelson, The Highwayman. That's probably good. I, I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm satisfied with this lineup. I will keep going. To Best Director. Okay, so, spoiler alert, I don't know if you've noticed, actually, but these five films, I think they're the same five I had in uh, editing. And I, I stand by, I think these are probably the five movies that people will remember most overall. So, uh, and spoiler, they're all in Best Picture. Uh, I feel like Jordan Peele, for us, I could almost see him being a lone director nominee because he was nominated for Get Out and people really do, people really love Us. Us is probably the best received film of 2019, uh, critically. And then Endgame, everyone really loves Endgame. So that could almost be a lone director thing too. Olivia Wilde, people like Booksmart, uh, and I guess people like Late Night and Toy Story 4 is probably not happening in a million years, but Baby Steps, one day an animated movie will do well in the main categories. But, uh, yeah, okay. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Let me just get to the people that were almost in consideration. Danny Boyle, Yesterday. David Robert Mitchell, Under the Silver Lake. Dan Gilroy, Velvet Buzzsaw. Anna Bowden, Ryan Fleck, Captain Marvel. Dexter Fletcher, Rocket Man, Joe Talbot, The Last Black Man in San Francisco, Neil Berger, The Upside, David F. Sandberg, Shazam, Robert Rodriguez, Alita Battle Angel, John Lee Hancock, The Highwayman. Um, so, yeah, I don't really know what else to say. Uh, I think I've already gone over pretty much everything. And now I'm going to get to the big one, Best Picture. And I put 10 nominees in, even though we obviously will not have 10 we will obviously not have 10 films in Best Picture, um, and it obviously won't be these 10. I feel like we have a solid five. Us, Avengers Endgame, Booksmart, Toy Story 4, Late Night. People like those movies well enough. I feel like that's your top four. I thought that's your top five. And then the, the other five I just threw in because they there wasn't much else. That's just my tagline for this video. There wasn't much else. And what was what were the other movies that were considered? The Upside, Captain Marvel, Shazam, Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil and Vile, Velvet Buzzsaw, Pokemon Detective Pikachu, The Best of Enemies, The Dead Don't Die, Serenity, uh, and How to Train Dragon 3. Again, like, I think I've gone over everything at this point. I feel like, of the movies of 2016, uh... 2016? Oh my god, I am so confused. Of the movies of the first six months of 2019, see, that's how I made the mistake, Us has the best chance of getting a Best Picture nomination because it was so well-received critically and because people like to get out and they might feel obligated to vote for this one and it has a great performance in Lupita Nyong'o. So Us seems very, very possible. And then Avengers Endgame is unlikely but feels possible given what a huge deal that movie is. And the Academy might be like, well, it's of our time. Like, we'll do it to seem timely because it's such a big moneymaker. We'll do it to be relevant. We'll do it to get ratings. I could see that happening, but I doubt it. Booksmart could happen, but I feel like its best bet is an original screenplay. Um, but they might want to be like, hey, it's a fun comedy that everyone liked and it's directed by a woman, so we'll support it. And then Toy Story 4, possible. Uh, I I don't think it's going to happen, but I think with animated movies now, I just have to keep predicting that it won't happen, and then one day I'll be surprised. Like, 
I was first on the train for Inside Out, first on the train for Zootopia, and then when Coco came out, I was yelling from the rafters, and the Academy just never listens to me. Uh, and they probably shouldn't. But, I, I don't know. One day an animated film will break through, and Toy Story 4 is well-liked, but people did also have issues with it, so... I don't know. And we never know. Maybe Frozen 2 will be really good. But... Yeah, and then late night, well liked comedy, like all the same things as Book Smart, but slightly less well received. And then all the others, I don't think are going to come anywhere near this category, but maybe they'll get a couple of votes. We still have six more months to go, and that's when they release the majority of the really interesting films. So this was basically just an experiment to ask if the Academy Awards, if they announce the nominations today, what would the nominations be? And also, what movies from the first six months of the year have a, have the best chances of showing up um, in the nominations. So, yeah, uh, that's my little video. I'm gonna make I'm gonna be making another video very soon talking about my updated overall Oscar predictions for July. So to reiterate, this was not official Oscar predictions. I don't think your categories are gonna look anywhere close to this. But this was just a fun thought experiment, and then. You'll see more Oscar predictions from me in the future. So uh, see you later. Bye. Oh, one last thing. If you haven't already, please check out Captain Spirit. Link available in the description.